Whoa. As I turn the corner, I bump into someone. You. You were at the church. I recognize who it is. That's right. It's the man who stopped me by the entrance when I snuck into the church. I bribed him with mints, and then killed him. Hey, is that the ninja? Behind the man are five similarly dressed men. His friends, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. I see the men reach inside their coats, either for concealed guns or bladed weapons. Leave me alone. I asked to be left alone, but I have to admit, I'm a little glad that a stress-relieving distraction has decided to waltz up to me. When I come back home with a broken sign and a little bit of cash, I'm greeted by Yoru and some unfamiliar furniture. Where'd you get all this? Welcome home, I was given these. You were given them? Yep, I've got some food, too. Some people said, I can't employ you both, but I can give you this instead. Some people said they could employ one of us, but I guess it's hard to find anyone willing to employ us both. I see. Those misers, am I right? <laughs> this is the difference between me and Yoru. Yoru's gained the goodwill of many, and even if they can't employ both of us, they can still help feel fulfilled. Meanwhile, I killed someone I've killed before, and then I killed his friends, and I robbed their bodies. Oh well, if nobody will hire us, let's just start our own business, Sayako. The Ninja Delivery Service. How about it? It's a service where ninjas deliver things, like, uh, something. You don't need to stick around with me anymore. Huh? I'm sure you can find plenty of jobs for yourself, Yoru. Lots of people love you. And as long as you're not with me, they'll gladly employ you. But there's no point unless I'm with you, Sayako. Yoru looks confused and somewhat angry. I've never seen her make a face like that before, but I can't back down. Look, there's nothing I'm good at besides hurting others. That's probably the one and only thing I'm better than you at. There's work for you, but there's none for me. It's the truth that you're great, so what's the problem? But it won't do. It can do, and it will. I don't want to feel miserable. I don't want to hate you, so please... I should leave, shouldn't I? If possible. Sayako. What is it? Nothing, it's just... I got a live-in job offer, for one, so I'm going to go do that. That'd be for the best. Thanks for having me. No problem. That said, it's getting late, so the two of us sleep in the same bed tonight. I guess ending a relationship is more sluggish process than what you see on TV. Yoru unexpectedly sleeps quietly, neither snoring nor stirring. See, you can do it after all. After becoming the worst woman in the world, I mutter to myself as I feel her warmth in bed. Well, that's... a downer. Okay, thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Kathunk. The door shuts. It doesn't seem to shut in slow motion, and the sound of it shutting doesn't sound particularly sad, either. It feels like a relief, actually. I guess I really am a cold woman, after all. It may have only been for a short while, but Yor and I ate together and slept together, and yet I feel nothing now that she's gone. I space out for a few seconds, and then... Maybe I should have at least walked her out. I whisper an idea that comes way too late, but it feels like I'm lying to myself. If I walked her out and waved until she faded into the distance, it'd be so sad to look at her footsteps in the snow. At the very least, it'd be weird for me to do that when I'm the one who kicked her out. It'd be almost hypocritical, like I'm hiding my true feelings or something. My true feelings. That's right, I wanted Yoru to leave. 
It's not like I particularly enjoyed how I lived before you were moved in, but it's way better than living with someone who's loud all the time. After being in the negatives, I just wanted to return to zero. And now that Yoru is gone, my life is back to zero. For some reason, I feel like I needed to find a job, but I don't really need to. In short, the end goal was to get her out of my room, and now she has. The end. I didn't kick her out buck naked. I kicked her out after she had found herself a job and a new place to live. I'm sure I'll see her again in town eventually. We might even drink coffee together at Mr. Patel's cafe again. Maybe Yoru would vent about work. Maybe Pacifica and Anya will be there too and sympathize with her. And maybe the three of them will laugh. Maybe I'll even join in and laugh too. I imagine a future like that. Yep, we've settled everything peacefully. Congratulations, you've reached the most optimal solution. I'm sure it is, it probably is. Yes, yes. I close my eyes and nod my head, trying to give myself validation. Yes, 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 yes. The repeated nodding of my head makes me want to go and lie down for a bit. Yes, you should go to sleep. Maybe that'll cheer me up a little. That's right. Once I cheer up, I can go talk to Pacifica and Anya. Yes. My eyes snap open when the doorbell rings. I'm already up on my feet before I know it. Yoru? I feel irritated even as I reach out for the doorknob and open the door. Exactly. Ugh. Exactly what exactly? Standing there is the elderly man from back when, which, as I expected, is exactly the opposite of exactly what I expected. I can barely remember things about Pacifica, Anya, and even myself, and yet I quickly remember this elderly man. I know it's due to recency bias, but it still sings. I'm here to apply for that position of roommate. He smells like dirt, sweat, and a tinge of excrement. I furrow my eyebrows at the sudden affront on my lungs. Simply put, I heard that there was an opening in this room. It's dangerous for girlie to be living all by her lonesome, so I'll move in to help you. No thanks. It's clear that he's not in the right of mind. Plus, he's got a knack at getting under my skin. Luckily, he doesn't seem to realize it himself. What's the matter? You hate strong men or something? From what I reckon, handsome old men get tax benefits. Act now, and I'll throw in a one of those cricket things. He pulls some weird giant spatula looking thing out of his pocket and starts swinging it around, only for it to slip out of his hands. I see it fly towards the stairs out of the corner of my eye. I originally lived by myself, so I don't need a roommate. I need to drive him away quick before he this becomes another bad experience. I've had enough of those. I know that, of course. The elderly man suddenly softens his speech. I knew you were all by your lonesome this whole time, little missy, and I know you're no longer alone no more. You changed for good. There ain't no going back to how you were, little missy. Now that you know about the holes in your heart, you can't no longer exist by your lonesome. The elderly man speaks matter-of-factly as he strokes his beard. He accurately describes my current situation objectively and without emotion. He reminds me of one of my college professors. I wonder how he's doing. Wait, have I even gone to college? I think you're just like me, little missy. Your holes are my holes, and I've come to fill your holes. Holes? You mean... Yes, siree. Your holes. Oh, please. Don't be weird. He suddenly shouts and makes an exaggerated gesture as he continues. A fine metaphor, if I do say so myself. I didn't prepare no script, but them fine words, if I do say so myself. Hee hee hee. We are holes. Holes crudely dug out and crudely filled back up. We are holes. A crudely filled hole looks good, but it ain't the real thing, and it ain't got much purpose. But neither way is still there. Holes. Well, sure enough, I do feel like some holes have been poked into me. I have to admit, I do feel pretty hurt. Even if getting filled back up doesn't fix everything, it's still a relief just to exist, isn't it? I understand you, little missy. Those two us ain't that different after all. Please don't erase any more. I'm very, very afraid right now, and the truth is, it'd be really assuring. I'm very, very afraid right now, and the truth is, it'd be really reassuring if Yoru were by my side.
Why did I open my big mouth and drive her away? Wait, no. All I did was pout a bit. Honestly, what was that enough to make her leave? Damn it. That ingrate shit. I'll give her a piece of my mind. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean that at all. You really don't remember where I came from, little missy. That's another hole. Please don't leave me by myself. In other words... The only thing that can fill your holes is someone else with holes like me. That way I can fill my own holes, too. If being a loner is my style, then I should at least repent and ask for forgiveness. Can't you get yourself ready to see her again? I quickly back away when I realize that the elderly man's grabbing my shoulder. I thought I'd shake him off, but his grip is stronger than I expected, so I just end up stumbling slightly. Let me go. I need to see Yoru again. No, I ain't never let go of you again. Cut it out already. When the man gets up in my face, I can't help but shut my eyes. What does he want with me? If he's here, then that means he knows where I live. Which means I've got no place to run. My beloved precious. If this goes on any longer, I might as well. Dampfnoodle. Marzipan. I open my eyes at the sound of the elderly man's death throes. What's with this old man and filling holes? If you're that lonely, then fill your holes with pudding cups or something. Before my eyes is the elderly man, bleeding from the head and low holding a bat of some sort. It hasn't even been a week, so I easily recall her name. I'm honestly glad that I still remember. Oh, um... It's low, remember? I do remember. That's your nickname, right? And you live in the room above mine. I've forgotten her real name, but I guess that's no big deal. Oh, right. Um, I mean, I wanted to say thanks. I failed to thank her properly, but I'm used to being a failure. In any case, the most important thing is that I'm free from the elderly man now. Hmm, are you okay? He didn't hurt you or anything, did he? I'm a-okay. I try to show her just how energetic I am, but it comes out awkwardly. Low giggles. Well, I guess that wasn't a complete failure, then. Seeing Glow's smile cheers me up a little bit, too. Good. Be careful of perverts, okay? Oh, don't worry. I'll do something about him. Ugh, he stinks. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. You and Yoru come visit sometime, okay? Lo goes down the stairs, dragging the elderly man behind her. The man leaves behind a trail of blood. I'll come by when I've got the chance. I murmur a small reply. This house resembles Pacifica's house, but it's even bigger and somehow a little intimidating. I know the price of land is cheap here since it's a rural town, but I think you'd still have to be pretty rich to have a house like this. This house is where Yoru works now. It apparently belongs to an elderly woman named Margaret. Obviously, I don't know a thing about her. I don't have the guts to ring the doorbell. I guess I should have expected that. Instead, I pick up some snow by my feet and play around with it. <laughs> if I ring the bell, I figure it'll either be Yoru who'll answer it, or someone else who can fetch her for me. I want to see Yoru and apologize to her. I want to tell her that I don't regret letting her live with me at all. Yeah. But that's just self-serving. I'd only be doing that to make me feel better about myself, so what should I change about my approach? Um... Maybe if I tell Yoru how I feel, she'll cheer up a little. It's not like our relationship can get any worse. Maybe it's worth a shot. But what if it's not? What if I just make Yoru feel even worse? Now that I think about it, interpersonal relationships don't bottom out at zero. They often run into the negatives. Once the snowball in my hands is as dense as it can be, I chuck it away. If that's the case, then she might snap at me and ask why I'd say something to drive her away. I'm scared. I want to go home, but I can't just leave. So I pick up some fresh snow, pack it into another snowball, and hurl that one too. Now there's no more snow at my feet. I consider picking up dirt and making a mud ball, but that's when the door opens. Oh, hi, Sayako. Oh, uh, hi. 
It's okay. I'm doing perfectly fine. No need to worry about me. Oh, uh, that's not why I came. After some insistence, I got paid in advance, so I'm good with living expenses. That said, I don't have much in terms of living expenses since it's a live-in job. Yoru gives me an ambiguous chuckle. I know my sixth sense could use some glasses, but even I can kind of tell that her laughter is forced. No, that's not it. There's just something I wanted to talk about, and... And just who gave you permission to talk? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The elderly woman lets out a hoarse voice. Are you distracting her? I've paid good money to hire that pet sitter, so don't you try to make a fool out of me. Don't mock me. She comes snapping at me, almost pushing Yoru to the side. So Yoru's a pet sitter. She does seem like she'd be good with animals. I'm not paying her to talk on the clock. Are you going to pay for her lost time? Don't mock me. Don't mock me. What a catchphrase. Sure enough, Yoru's holding a leash, but the pet, on the other hand... Um, I'm sorry. Very well, I'll let you off the hook just this once. Don't take me for a fool. Is she gonna say don't mock me? No. The elderly just love giving me an earful today, huh? Are all the elderly towns ghosts like this? I don't have much experience handling the elderly, so all I can do is apologize and regret coming here without a plan. The elderly woman, or rather Margaret, looks like she isn't finished talking, but Yoru cheerfully chimes in as if to interrupt her. I'll go take Rocky on a walk now, okay? Right, she's a professional pet sitter now. An unemployed person like me shouldn't distract her. That's not Rocky. Margaret shrieks hysterically. For a second, I have no idea what's happening. Or rather, I do realize that Margaret just hit Yoru with her cane, but my brain freezes for a few seconds, processing why she did that. The violence seemed to come to her all too naturally. Margaret hit Yoru in the face with her cane as if it was the most natural thing in the world. But that's only half of it. The other half has got to be because of the pet I see on the other end of the leash. Both my brain and body freeze in place. Um, I mean, McCready? I'm sorry. No, that's Biscuit. Are you blind? Can't you tell the boys from the girls? What is your problem? Don't take me for a fool. It's a brown lump of clay tied to a rope. I'm sorry. Why can't you tell just by looking? That's clearly a girl. Ha ha ha. It's clearly a lump of clay. A genderless, inorganic clump. Anyway, we'll be going on that walk. I won't accept any slacking off, okay? And I'll know. Put your heart into it. The heart is key. If it weren't for your whispering, let's go, I probably would have been stuck standing there in shock of the bizarre situation. Oh, right. I follow after Yoru once she's walked several steps dragging along Biscuit, or rather, the lump of clay on a string. So, um, about Biscuit... This is just a lump of clay. Yoru nonchalantly states the obvious. There are others like it, but Miss Margaret says she can tell them apart. There are others? Yeah, Miss Margaret takes care of about a hundred of them in total, and they all have names, but she says it's hard for her to walk them all. Jeez. A hundred. It's nowhere near 1,025, but that's still a lot of pets. Why is she naming lumps of clay and keeping them as pets? They don't eat, they don't poop, and they don't bark either. What a groundbreaking pet these pet clays are. Ah. Was I thinking out loud again? <laughs> I'm psychic. Yoru playfully continues. My job is to walk them all, and help Miss Margaret around the house, too. Wouldn't it be more efficient to walk them all at once? It's the heart, apparently. The heart? Yeah, apparently walking them all at once is proof of being heartless, and it's a bad influence on the pet place. I don't get it. I know, right? 
But I get money and a place to live, so I'll do my best. I'm quite good at menial jobs like this anyway. But she hit you with a cane. An old lady's not strong enough to kill me. But still. She's treating you like a slave, isn't she? You should quit. Dragging around lumps of clay all day isn't proper work. I can't. I got paid plenty in advance, and I already bought several things. That'd be skipping the bill. Let me take care of it. I'll thrust something sharp into her, and then... I stumble over my words, then I stumble to the ground. This isn't work. All I'm capable of is terror and destruction, and that's not what Yoro needs right now. She's chosen to live in this town as one of its town ghosts. To live among us in peace with her own role to play. Thank you, I'm glad you care about me. As Yoru speaks, her face looks tired, yet lively. It makes me feel like my tiny regrets are nothing more than insignificant digits, truncated several places after the decimal point. So I decide not to say anything. Yoru is independent now, so I need to be independent too. By the way, about how deep in debt are you? Despite my decision to be independent, I stubbornly ask that question. I ask because I figure if I can find work for myself and save enough money, maybe I can take her back, or at the very least get her a more decent job. It wouldn't be bad to work towards a goal like that. Um... Yoru starts counting out the money on her fingers. Yep. Yoru comes up with a figure that far exceeds my expectations. It's enough money to buy two decent cars, or one good car. What did you use that money on? Several things. I figured I might as well, since I've got nowhere else to go, so... So? So I splurged a little. Aw, oh, come on. That's right, I forgot how I'm not used to this girl's thoughtless optimism. 